I really enjoyed Keith's message um, uh, a week last Shabbat uh, regarding uh, worship and uh, what he said about going to the communion table with a clean heart and clean hands and uh, not having anything against your brother. Um, it was really pertinent and um, and that fits with what I've asked to go in the news sheet this week and what I've put on Facebook, which is the um, aspect of disunity in the country. And there is no doubt that today in the United Kingdom there are grounds to perhaps re rename our nation as a disunited net kingdom rather than a united kingdom. There is now a polarisation on the political spectrum which probably we haven't seen for a long time. And it's bringing about extreme right or extreme left political views, causing politicians who once would have expected to be wise and courteous in situations to become vicious and damning. Accusations one against another have moved from the political debate to outright abuse of each other. Their voice may seem calm and caring, but their words and their motives are often damaging and discrediting. In these times, we don't only see politicians unfairly attacking others from the opposite party, but we have seen it take place within their own parties. The case of Dame Louise Alman is a good example of, hate, of a hate campaign within her party to drive her out of politics. There was also the case of the Welsh Assembly member Carl Sargent, who died exactly two years ago yesterday because of an allegation, which is still unfounded, discrediting him. Without being provided with any of the evidence for the allegation, he was unfairly suspended from his political duties, causing him to take his own life. His son Jack democratically took his pl father's place after an election and is now a voice in Welsh politics for a campaign for kinder politics. There is also a worrying trend in the country which is seeing social media being used as a tool not only to abuse but to incite hatred against politicians and public servants. The case of 41 year old Joe Cox MP who was murdered in June 2016 is an example of extreme hatred manifesting into murder of an innocent and valuable representative of our society. Hatred on social media has recently resulted in a number of MPs understandably resigning as they can't face this continuing abuse, particularly during this coming election. This takes me back to the days of a police officer when criminals who were arrested and awaiting court would make vitriolic and unsubstantiated accusations against individuals or groups of police officers. This caused others to despise the police service, which in reality was trying to protect the community. This hatred among some in the criminal community was not simply aimed at the police service, but was also aimed towards each other. I dealt with some informants who would become police informants, not because they had a moral revelation that they wanted to help make the community a better place, but because they wanted to destroy other criminals for their own gain, and in some cases they wanted to destroy decent members of society. I dealt with some informants who were heavily involved in the occult. In fact, a lot of my informants were involved in the occult and witchcraft and the drug fraternity. And they would use every skill and cunning not only to set up rivals, but also set up police officers. And, and uh, a, a couple of times I had that happen to me where drug dealers tried to set me up. And they would do so by telling lies, fabricating stories. And in fact, in one case, somebody tried to hand me some uh, <coughs> um, amphetamine, but I was covered by my partner who, uh, who knew what was happening. Uh, so for that reason, we always met people in twos. We always went as partners to meet informants because we couldn't trust them and we recorded those meetings accurately. I suppose to an extent, this type of behavior has become commonplace in society and is not only destructive, but damaging to every part of society. 
I see it in other areas of our community, particularly in regards to the Jewish community. In the first six months of this year, we have seen the highest number of anti-Semitic incidents in the UK during the January to June period. And that figure was 892 anti-Semitic attacks, which is what I would describe as unbelievable, particularly in a modern, so-called enlightened and tolerant society. Christian anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, which is the same thing, is also on the rise, with a few activists inciting hatred by manipulating facts and events in Israel into reports which are promulgated, often amongst churches, which are untrue, thereby inciting the age-old hatred against Jews called anti-Semitism. Lies, deceit and targeting of a people group or individuals incites hatred. It divides and has the capability to destroy lives. John the Apostle wrote, We love because he, meaning God, loved us. Those who say I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters. And that's what Keith was talking about when we're going to the, up to the communion table. Now I know that advice from John is aimed at the believing community and it is vitally important that we apply it in our Christian walk. But it also applies in the wider community. If we don't love and respect each other, then who are we? That doesn't mean at all that we have to agree with each other, but we have to do so in love, kindness and patience. Of course we have disagreements and we have uh, understand things in different ways, but we have to deal with each other with this love and kindness and patience that God expects of us. As we, particularly Christians, use social media and other platforms to promulgate our ideas of the coming elections or even the Brexit debate, let us remember that we are God's representatives here on earth and have to show an example to others. If we claim to know God, then we have to show love and try to enter into a debate, whether it's in politics, the community, or in the faith community with respect and kindness. John says in a few words something which we should all apply to our lives, believer or not. He says, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. If we don't love and are unkind, can we say that we are really true followers of God? I really like what Jack Sargent is doing in Wales to try and make, bring about kinder politics, to try and bring about a, a respect for each other in the political realm. But it should never have been unkind in the first place. Therefore, let us all reflect on the manner in which we deal with each other in the believing community or with our friends in our community, or our political leaders. And let's always be kind with our tongue, our pen, our hearts, as this is a true sign of our love for God and our fellow men. And this is what will unite us in the end, here in the United Kingdom. So Shabbat Shalom, Mike Fryer.